Good morning, everyone. My name is Alyssa, and on behalf of Kerasoft Technology, I would like to welcome you to our webinar, Optimizing Acquisitions with DocuSign and Steampunk. With that, I'd like to turn it over to our first Steampunk presenter of the day, Joey. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Alyssa. Uh, really appreciate everyone's time this morning and joining our webinar. Um, and as Alyssa shared, welcome to Optimizing Acquisitions with DocuSign and Steampunk. My name is uh, Joey Pahira, and I lead our health sector account at Steampunk. And, and joining me today is Dave Fisher, a solutions engineer from DocuSign. In a moment, we plan to walk you through a demo that our two companies have built together to, to showcase the art of the possible when it comes to a modernized solicitation generation solution for acquisition packages. Um, for those that haven't heard of Steampunk though, I, I wanted to share that, that we are an employee owned small business. And we were founded on the principles of putting our federal, government's client, federal government clients at the center of everything we design, develop and deliver to drive game changing impacts and user experiences. And as a result of our startup culture and our human centered delivery approach, Steampunk is quickly becoming a go-to provider across the government space when it comes to low code, and no code integrations with platforms such as Salesforce and DocuSign, which we're going to highlight today. Um, before we get started, though, I, I, I did want to remind everybody that, that Kerasoft has a question button below on your screen. So feel free to ask questions during our presentation. We, we will definitely try to answer them as we go um, throughout the presentation. But just uh, as a quick reminder, since we are only scheduled for 30 minutes today and we want to highlight our demo that we built out for you, if we promise, if we don't answer your questions during the session, we'll, we'll follow up with you directly afterwards. So utilizing a design-led approach, we here at Steampunk have integrated human-centered design principles with agile methodology into a framework that we've trademarked as design intelligence. Our design intelligence methodology offers a unique approach to solving federal agencies' most complex problems. And we use this framework to deep dive into our clients' current processes and workflows by leveraging contextual inquiries, interviews, and design workshops, and then developing with our clients' journey maps to create custom-tailored solutions based off of their unique wants and needs. And we've applied this proven approach with federal acquisition SMEs over the past few months to develop an improved document generation system for procurements utilizing industry leading platforms, Salesforce and DocuSign. But before we demo this innovative solution that we've built, I wanted to share why we at Steampunk have, have really leaned in on optimizing the acquisition process. Before I joined Steampunk, I was actually a federal acquisition professional and, and a core. So, so I know firsthand the challenges present with the current acquisition tools. For many years, I supported the acquisition lifecycle and worked closely with my customers to help develop and finalize acquisition packages. And during my time with the federal government, I, I saw firsthand the outcome of doing my job efficiently. Medical equipment was procured on time and helped to save people's lives. And lab reagents or supplies were ordered to conduct research and help to cure disease. Over the last decade, I've had the privilege to support multiple federal acquisition offices, target strategic approaches to support increased collaboration, greater simplification, performance improvement, innovation, and cost-saving initiatives. However, these experiences have informed one particular and important observation. There's a digital experience gap in the federal acquisition community, and it's in desperate need of capitalizing on modern technology help improve the user experience, to help automate workloads, improve transparency, enhance standardization, balance workloads, and increase compliance. In my experience, I have seen that the current acquisition landscape, unfortunately, is littered with outdated, disjointed, and disparate legacy systems that force the acquisition community to employ inefficient workarounds. And these disjointed legacy systems have left our 1102s and contract specialists to foot the bill, paying with their time and with their patience. Instead of fiddling with the table or formatting issues or version control challenges, wouldn't it be better to focus on developing tools that could better help our acquisition teams focus on what's important, efficiently and timely awarding contracts to support the agency mission? 
Technology choices sh should enable our organizations to leverage the collective knowledge and experience of the entire organization. Imagine if there was one system that helped the acquisition, the business, and its customers and vendors to all collaborate in one place, where a clause library could automatically be updated in real time based on newly published provisions and process metrics and contract insights were available on demand so that data-driven decision and improvements could be made. The fact is, there are modern tools and proven processes that eliminate the need for contracting officers and specialists to work in silos. We here at Steampunk have worked with Salesforce and DocuSign platforms to create a tool that helps to close this digital experience gap and leverage the collective knowledge and experience of the entire organization to help create a unified acquisition experience. So I, I know that the acquisition lifecycle starts with the identification of a need for a program and ends with the closeout of a contract. And, and I recognize that there are IT modernization needs at each stage of the process from pre-award to post-award. And, and we're hoping to have future sessions with Kerasoft to highlight the benefits of centralizing acquisition IT platforms to help improve the data-driven decision-making and modernize how contracts are managed. But for today, we're gonna to focus in on the contract solicitation and selection process and showcase an optimized approach to support the generation of acquisition documents. As I discussed earlier, over the past few months, we here at Steampunk have used our design intelligence principles to work directly with NIH contracting officers to, to really better understand the existing contract solicitation and selection process, as well as the technology currently being used to enable the generation of these documents. And we came to the following understanding. After the pre-award process has completed and a package has been finalized, the first step to create a solicitation is for the contracting officer or specialist to review an acquisition packet provided by the business owners. Um, but we heard through the acquisition community though, that these acquisition documents can come from a variety of different systems, whether that be shared drives or the pot system or email, et cetera. And, and it's up to the CO or the CS to, to know where and how to pull all of these correct documents together in order to, to generate a full final solicitation package. Then once the packet is gathered together and consolidated and reviewed, the solicitation is then generated through the um, DGS system. Again, though, we learned through our interviews that this editing process of the, of the different fields at times can be clunky and challenging to add or edit updates to the latest clauses from FAR regulations or special contract requirements. Once the document is finally generated and the CO or CS submits for review and approval, um, on, you know, because of interface challenges, these reviews are often done then outside of the system, and, and that can provide a lot of risk to the agency. Um, fourth, the acquisition leadership team member then would receive the solicitation for review, but we have heard that there, there really isn't a standardized process in place, and that feedback can be given in a variety of ways, and oftentimes it's just printed out and um, walked over to the contracting specialist desk. And, and when that is the case, these version updates um, typically aren't tracked and, and can be lost over time, making it really difficult to learn and grow as a professional. Once this takes place, the solicitation is then approved and ready for release. But we heard that there really isn't existing system connections from DGS into things like PRISM and FPDS and SAM.gov to name a potential few API endpoints? Or is there an opportunity to connect and attach forms like the SF1449? Lastly, once everything is completed, and then this is, uh, it's then left up to the acquisition leadership team members to figure out how to track metrics and determine workload balances and timelines to award. I'm now gonna hand over the presentation to Dave Fisher from DocuSign to demo a modernized tool that, that we created that we think can really help resolve a lot of these challenges and drastically improve the efficiency and speed of which the acquisition documents can be developed and released to that vendor community. So Dave, over to you. Good morning, thank you, Joey. I've enjoyed collaborating with Steampunk uh, and building out this application demo and look forward to showcasing 
how a modern cloud-based solution can help transform the acquisition process. Today, I'll be highlighting functional components from our digital acquisition system built on Salesforce and DocuSign. The demo scenarios will be presented through several personas. First, as a CS, a contracting specialist, I'll generate a contract package for review. Next, as an acquisition leader, I'll review and approve the created package. Then back in the contracting specialist role, I'll finalize the package and send a form 1449 for signature. And then finally, I'll showcase some of the contracting analytics that acquisition leadership can use across their organization. All of these scenarios will be done from the user interface that you see on the screen, the digital acquisition system. Just to highlight a few things on the home screen, uh, this is a great way for me to have immediate access as a contracting specialist to my personal tasks that are assigned to me or others, uh, uh, by others, excuse me, from the uh, system. And these are related to my RFPs, my RFQs, and other contracting activity. It really allows me to stay focused day to day on my responsibilities and ensures that I can review or update records efficiently and move my acquisition packages through the system in a timely manner. Let's take a look at an acquisition detail record that is currently in a developed package stage. You'll notice it here as acquisition number 1016 related to SC Solutions Inc. I need to review the record details collected for this package to determine if it's ready for review by my leadership. So as I scroll through, I can see recent conversations that I've had with colleagues around this contract. I can also scroll down and see some basic contact information related to this contracting packet. Click on the related tab and I can open the actual contracting packet for the gene therapy program. You'll notice the contracting detail page contains all relevant field level data that I've collected to date. Some of this data I entered, other data points have been entered through integrations to systems like PRISM and SAM.gov. The system is scalable and has been built to incorporate policy updates into our business logic, workflow, real-time integrations, and validation rules. It looks to me like we have most of the inform information needed to move this contracting packet into a ready for review state. However, the system is informing me that I need to update a few fields before I can, before I can do that. So let me scroll down and I notice that I need to fill out both the contract type and the organiza organizational type field because these are dynamically relevant to adding FAR clauses to the packet. So I'm gonna come in and make two selections. For my contract type, I'll do a fixed price. For my organizational type, we'll do a commercial. When I hit save, as I scroll down, you'll notice that two FAR clauses have dynamically been populated and added to my contracting packet. In addition to that, I have personnel resources that have been assigned to this contract through an integration with my employee database. Now I can generate a draft version of this contract. In order to do that, let's click on the generate contract button. This opens DocuSign CLM directly from within Salesforce and is going to allow me to generate this contract. I scroll down and again, I get one more chance to see the relevant dynamic population of information before it's actually applied to my template. Everything looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and click next. This is going to build a preview of my document. As I scroll down, I can see that the contract and reference number have been applied to the header and all of the text that's highlighted in blue is being pulled directly from the system onto the contract template. 
further down, I'll notice that I have relevant FAR clauses that were populated as well. And then on the next page down, I have my personnel that have also been added to the contracting packet template. At this point, I'm confident that I'm able to get this ready for review and approval. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save and create version one for review and approval. You'll notice that the first version of the contract has been added under the contract files section. And I have version one automatically named and saved in a folder that's linked to the contract ID number as well. When I click on the contracting packet link as an acquisition leader, this is gonna allow me to review and approve the version of the contract that you're seeing on the screen. If I wanted to, I could download the file, make edits in Microsoft Word, and then I can upload a new version as well. In addition to that, if I need to take a look at what has occurred over time related to uh, multiple versions or other people's activity related to this contract packet, I have the ability to do that. And then as versions are saved, in the system, I can do version comparison that'll show all the markups related to uh, from one version to the next. I can go ahead and mark this as uh, ready as review complete, and the system will update uh, the workflow and task notifications related to all of the activity that I've done as my in my acquisition leader role um, as it relates to the review and approval, and have everything show up in the contracting packet. Now let's move back into the contracting specialist persona. I have everything that I need for final processing. And so I'm going to go ahead and update the status in this case to final processing. You'll notice that the system has created a task for me to create and send a form 1449. It gave me a day to do that, but I'm gonna go ahead and process the form 1449 right now. In this scenario, we're gonna have two signers so the system is gonna present the correct form template. I have an opportunity to review signer one, who is the contractor offerer, and signer two, who is myself, the contracting specialist. And last but not least, I get one more opportunity to review and validate the population of the form template before I send this out for signature. So DocuSign opens from within the application. And as I scroll down, all the data has been pulled onto the template. Signer one is in yellow, signer two, myself is in blue, and we're ready to send this out for signature. Email notifications will be sent out to both signers. Signer one, my contractor will receive the notification and open up the envelope from within their email application and simply scroll down, review, and sign. Once this is completed, me as the contracting specialist, is I'm going to receive the notification as well. And I'll go in to countersign that document. DocuSign opens as well for me. I scroll down, I commit my signature and save this off to the digital acquisition system. All signing is now complete. We go back into our contracting packets. 
we can take a look at what a finished packet will look like. You'll notice as we scroll down, all of the relevant information is complete. We have validation through the envelope status that all signatures have been received. And the final two files, the 1449, as well as the certificate of completion, which is the legally binding digital certificate tied to those sign signers are stored in my contracting packet as well. Last but not least, I wanted to highlight some dashboards that are relevant to the activity across my contracting shop as a division director. Real-time analytics allow me to make fact-based decisions related to staffing levels, reducing bottlenecks or backlogs, and keeping contract work workloads balanced across my division. This dashboard is pulling information from multiple reports in the system related to the status of my contracting packets, the workload of my contracting officers, and contract start dates for upcoming quarters. With two clicks, I can move from a dashboard to the underlying report, and then if needed, I can click directly into the contracting packet record. The system can even schedule these reports for distribution across my organization and allow for better transparency in my team's work and enabling leadership to make solid strategic business decisions. So in conclusion, I just want to review what you saw. We talked about the as is process, but what we'd like to do is actually talk about the future state. So in a future state, you would have a consolidated data source, whether through integrations or the platform that you saw today. The platform is built to allow for business process automation and validation of all of our fields and clauses. It's a scalable platform, so as policy changes or process changes occur, those can be configured into the system and reflected in the user, user experience. We've tried to streamline the review and approval process using version controls, workflows, notifications, and tasks. And through the approval process, we can update information across multiple systems via our APIs. Lastly, being able to track and manage contracting pipeline is extremely important and analytics built into the platform allow for those business insights. This concludes the live demo and I will turn it back over to Joey for some final comments. Thanks, uh, thanks Dave, that, that was really great. Um, I see we have a question. We might have a couple minutes of time um, and I might hand it over to Evan from DocuSign to, to answer the question that came in. Uh, happy to answer some more or follow up with people directly. But before we do that, I, you know, I just wanted to wrap up and um, uh, we're just kind of re recap what we reviewed here today. Um, uh, you know, so what, what we talked about is, is our team here at Steampunk took our trademark design intelligence approach, which again is combining principles of human-centered design and agile methodologies. We work directly with contracting officers to identify existing pain points faced every day by the acquisition community. And we proactively brought in two of the leading industry platform providers, Salesforce and DocuSign, to collaboratively develop a solution that we are confident can improve the final end product, or in this case, an acquisition solicitation document that removes a lot of the existing hurdles of multiple systems or outdated system functionality. Um, so with that, you know, we were excited to share this with you today and we hope we were able to kind of give you a little taste of the art of the possible. Um, we would love the opportunity to interact and work with you in the future, uh, those that have attended or those that might be interested. Uh, we can showcase more of this tool, um, dive in deeper to questions 
that you might have or share more about our design intelligence approach and see if you may have interest in, in uh, using our methodology to help solve and work on challenges you may be facing within your office. Um, so with that, um, we've got a couple minutes. So Evan, I might hand it over to you to allow you to introduce yourself. Uh, and But uh, thank you everybody for your time this afternoon. Sure, thanks Joey. Uh, so my name is Evan Anderson. I'm the account executive at DocuSign um, and support HHS. Um, so the question is, are modifications tracked as separate actions from the original contract? How about request to exercise options? There is flexibility in how we can configure the system to meet your specific workflow rules. Um, at a minimum, the data that is captured and approved through the initial contract action can certainly be reused. So much of the downstream um, you know, modifications or request to exercise options um, are extremely efficient, right? So we're not going to retype that. That said is that if you want that to be part of the original, um, we can certainly have that within the same, say, um, uh, object in the system. Or, or if you would like that to be separate, um, but link them or have that relationship built in, that's also uh, possible as well. So um, multiple workflows for document generation um, are present to handle those type of common scenarios. So 